In each episode of this series, I will offer an applicant a blind choice of either a pleasant experience, a treat, or a darker trick. They won't know which one they've chosen, and they may not know how or when it will happen to them. All the applicants responded to advertisement. These are the six people that I've selected. They just don't know it yet. Welcome to Trick or Treat. <laughs> Tonight's applicant, Andy, is a 31-year-old IT consultant from London. Having chosen him for the show, I've had our crew film him covertly so that I can watch him and get a sense of what makes him tick. Like many people who work in IT, Andy keeps his emotions rather cool. It's time to tell him his application has been successful, so we filled his local cinema with hidden cameras and a pretend audience. And he has received tickets to what he thinks is a free screening of a new release. Thank you for volunteering to be part of the show. Uh, we'd love to use you. What happens to you in the show depends largely upon your choice of one of these two cards. Okay? One of them says trick, and one of them says treat. I'll ask you to choose one of these two cards. If you choose the one that says treat, it'll be something pleasant. If you choose the one that says trick, it won't be. So, why don't you stand up for me, Andy? Take a step forward and look at the two cards. I'd like you to think about which one you would like to choose and when you're ready, point it out very clearly. That is this one here, correct? Yep. Thank you, Andy. Now, I don't want you to see what you've chosen, so I'd like you to turn and face the other way for me, please. Excellent. Thank you, Andy. You can turn back round now. Now, there's one more thing I'd like you to do. Uh, if you can step forward for me, you'll see there's a table just on the stage there with a contract on it. I need you to sign that contract. That just allows us to do anything we like with you. So have a quick read through it. And then if you can just pop your name at the bottom for me, there's a pen right next to it. Just there at the bottom would be great. Thank you, Andy. You can leave that there. Someone will pick it up later. Would you sit back down for me? Yep. Excellent. And you can expect a phone call sometime soon. We'll see more of Andy later on. Turner Prize nominees, the Chapman Brothers, are famously subversive British artists who've rocked the art world more than once with their outrageous works. Their art is collected by celebrities around the world and sells for vast sums. I asked them to bring along a piece of their work to an appropriately deconstructed location, and they chose Arachnikitty. It was recently valued by a gallery at £100,000. This painting is um, wonderful. I think there's six of them, um, but they're all fluffy animals that have got something seriously wrong with them. I've also invited Adrian Searle, chief art critic from The Guardian. It's the possibly destructive effect of art critics that interests me here. Hello, Adrian. Hi there. Thank you so much for doing this. Great Thanks pleasure. for coming along. Oh, real pleasure to meet you. Um, no one's given you any indication of what we're going to do today. Nothing at all. That's important. Fantastic. Now, be before we do it, um, I need to go and set something up. And before I set that up, I, I, this is odd. I'm going to ask you just to... Can you walk... OK, just turn face this way. I'd like you to walk... You're going to walk up to the end. OK. I'm obviously going to feel a little self-conscious, but just try and do it naturally. Just up to the end there, and then I'll ask you to turn around and slowly walk back. OK, just sort of, all right. Just... Uh, 
And thank you and come back. Ever had any damage to this arm? Not that I know Not that of. Not okay. All right. So I now need to go and set something up in the other room. Thank you for doing that, and I will come back and get you when I've done that. Okay. Hi. Do you Jake. Hi. Good to meet you. Um, you know, one of these is yours. Yes. I'm not going to tell you which is which. I'll be back in a second. OK. Will you guard them? Don't let anybody touch them now. That's the order I want them in. All right, thank you. OK, come stand over here for me. Just stand just there, that'd be great. OK, so, um, you've met Jake and Dinos? Absolutely. Uh, Arachna Kitty is one of these three. The other two are identically sized frames with a blank canvas, all right? It's so important at this point that you and Jake and Dinos and people watching this know that you, you, I haven't told you which one is. I, I have no idea where Ar Arachna Kitty is. Brilliant. Have the knife, please. Careful. Turn and face the easels, please. So I'm going to ask you, and you're going to do this twice, to approach any one of the three parcels, the three canvases, and slash the painting diagonally, all right? However, very importantly, don't actually cut or stab or slice anything until I give you the specific instruction to do that. Does that make sense? It does, yes. Okay. While you do this, I'll be looking the other way. It's very important you move quietly and don't say anything that would give me any, any indication of where you are, because I don't want to know which, okay. which easel you're buying. Okay. All right? I would like you, please, to walk over to any one of the three, and this will be one that you are planning to cut, to slice. So please head over to one of them. Please do so quietly so uh, I can't tell which you're going to. Now I'm going to presume that you've done that. I'll give you a few more seconds uh, in case you're moving uh, slowly. Otherwise I presume that you are in front of one of them now. You take the knife. Now, bear in mind that they're all framed quite thickly, so you need to avoid the, uh, the thick frame in the corners, but you want to stab that knife in near one corner. Do that for me now. Stab it in. And slice right the way down. Mind the uh, centre bar of the easel. Pull the paper off. OK, that's fine. I'm going to, I'm going to presume from that that... That wasn't the painting, and it sounds like you're over there. Uh, good, okay. All right, if you do get the painting, you just tell me. All right, there are two left. There's a 50-50 decision. Please feel free to change your mind as many times as you like, and then go and stand in front of one of the remaining two canvases. Uh, again, though, you're only going to walk up to it. Don't slash anything until I give you the instruction to cut, all right? Please walk over to one of the remaining 
two easels, the one that you intend to destroy. Change your mind if you wish. I don't want you to uh, answer out loud, but will you please nod your head if you're entirely happy that these are entirely free decisions that you're making at this point. Take the knife, please, and stab it into the corner of the painting. Hold it. Hang on, did you, did you tear it? I did. Hmm. Okay, go on, all the way through. <laughs> Excellent, they, they, yeah, had me worried there at the end. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Could, do you want to come and just undo this last one? <laughs> I, it's a bit of a wobble at the end. Do you want to just, guys, just come and undo this last one yourself so that... Uh, yeah, I'm going to just take the knife away. Can... I'm so, I'm so pleased. Thank you very much indeed. Look, thanks for coming <laughs> today. I really appreciate your time. It was, it was really good. That is it, isn't it? Yeah, this yeah, isn't, yeah. This isn't oh, the copy yes. that we've... Uh, no, no, it's, it's slightly better than it was before. <laughs> I had no idea where the genuine Chapman Brothers work was. And I almost toyed with the idea of changing direction as I made my way toward the second canvas. Slasher Searle would be uh, <laughs> not a bad name to be remembered by. <laughs> For his trick, I've decided to give Andy a surreal experience of split identity. And in order to plant the seeds of that confused sense of self, I set up a few encounters for him to experience whilst we secretly film him. Help the homeless. Spare change. Spare change. Help the homeless. Fuck you, Andy. You're just like me. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Prick. Later in the day, Andy is still under constant surveillance and meeting our actors in the street. What the fuck are you playing at, you dummy? Fuck you. No, you're fucking with me. I'm just walking around. You're a dummy, that's what you fucking are. Fuck you. You're fucking with me. Why? What? Fucking dummy. What's your problem, man? You're a dummy, that's what you are. Fucking dummy. No, you're a fucking dummy. Fuck you. No, fuck you. Hard to believe, but in America, I'm not the massive and lovable star you know me as here. I shall exploit my anonymity and try some daylight robbery in the financial capital of the world with a wallet full of blank paper. This is a little cheeky. This will be the first time, and I imagine the last, that I've met with these salespeople. Um, I'd like to... Can I buy some of your soul? Please. Yeah. How many would you like? Uh, maybe three... Three fillets. Three fillets? Thank you. 1855? 1855. Where are we playing, Thank you. This is a fantastic Thank place. You. Thank you. Are you a local? Have you always lived in this area? 20 years. 20 years, Jesus. OK, so how much was that? 1855. I was a bit intimidated by the uh, subway system. I didn't want to go on it, and then someone said, you know, it's OK, take it. Take it, it's fine. So uh, I did, but it's amazing. And you, where did you live before this, then? I live in Staten Island now. Staten Island, which is just over the water, isn't it? Thank you very much, indeed. Thank you, yeah, thank you. You too, thanks. Hi, hello. Can I get a hot dog, please? Do you know where I can find the nearest drugstore? Which one? OK, straight down there. Yeah, I've got a terrible headache. Do you know what's good for you to take so you can just take that and feel OK? What is that? You know, my dad's 65. Yeah, and you can keep the change. Whoa, what is this? That's blend. What is this? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. I thought you accepted that here. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye.
Hello, very good. Good. I'm kind of interested in maybe uh, one of these bands down here. These are platinum, are they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very nice. So, can you tell me about it? So it's this is a platinum uh, band with a giant hand and diamonds. Mm -hmm. Forty-five hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Well, I will take that as it is. I'll give you cash for that if that's okay. Thank you. All right. Great, lovely. I'll let you box that up. Thank you very much. It's the nearest subway here. Just on the corner down there. So is that north or south that way? Oh, no, neither. West. That's west that it's way. West. Okay, so that's right, north up there. I've been thinking the wrong way. Thank you very much indeed. So, straight down there on the corner. Uh -huh. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I was a bit intimidated about using the uh, subways here, but my friend just said, take it, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I was a bit intimidated about that, but that's great. So straight down there, that way down on this corner? Uh, yep. That way on that, straight down there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, goodbye. It's been two weeks since I met Andy in the cinema. Look at me. In the last 24 hours, I've exposed Andy to a number of encounters fucking dummy. which have made him very sensitive to the idea of being a ventriloquist dummy. He's been told to wear a black suit and tie and to meet me in the East End of London at an old empty music hall. The pieces are hopefully in place, and with a bit of help from me, the introduction of the doll should provide the final trigger. Thank you very much indeed. The fan dancing of Miss Ophelia Bits, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Well, without any further ado, uh, I'm going to introduce to you a very good friend of mine. I know the real reason why you're here tonight. Mr. Miggs, the mind-reading doll. Now, he's no dummy, ladies and gentlemen. Think a thought, and he'll know it in a blink. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Miggs. <laughs> Say hello to the ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Miggs. Say hello to the ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he's in a bit of a funny mood. Well, maybe if we get somebody up here whose mind he can read, he'll uh, be in a better mood. So, gentleman at the back there in the uh, black suit, what's your name? Andy. Andy, good to meet you. Why don't you uh, head up here on stage? Andy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. If you can come around here, we're going to need a hat for Andy, please. Dummy. Thank you, Andy. Nice suit. Just take a step nearer here. OK, so, Andy, here's how it works. You're going to think of a question that Mr Miggs could not possibly know the answer to. Something that you know I couldn't know, no one else here could know, and certainly Mr Miggs couldn't know. OK. Have you got something? Yes. Good. How many ready? Ask Mr Miggs the question. What is my mother's maiden name? What is his mother's maiden name, Mr Miggs? You want to step a little closer, Andy? I think he's going to whisper in your ear. What did he say? What did he say? He said how. And your mother's maiden name is? How. Is how, ladies and gentlemen, correct? 
Thank you very much. OK, second round. Let's do it again. This time, uh, Andy, I'd like you to think of an object. You can picture anything you like. Think of anything that you like. Mr Miggs will pick up on his thought. Yeah, I've got something. Fantastic. OK. Project that thought to Mr Miggs. Oh, I think he has something. What was it, Mr. Miggs? Tell us all. Was that it? What were you thinking of? A vase of flowers. A vase of flowers. And what did he say? Say it in his voice. A vase of flowers. Again, louder in his voice. A vase of flowers. A vase of flowers, ladies and gentlemen, was correct. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Now, for one last round, the most difficult challenge of all. <laughs> this time, Andy, I'd like you to think of something that you're ashamed of. Take a moment. Uh... OK. You got something? Yeah. Come in a little closer. In fact, just put your arm around uh, Mr Miggs, round his shoulders. Really? It's not yep. going to hurt me, is it? Not at all. Okay. Excellent. Take a look at him. Focus on that thought. Mr Miggs, tell us what is a shame of. Focus on that thought, Andy. Send it to him. Watch his lips, Sandy. Nice and clear, Mr. Mix. Well, uh, you know that hamster you had? You remember you threw him out the window on a parachute? An action man parachute when you were ten? Yeah, do you remember that? He threw a hamster out the window on a parachute, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Mix was correct. Thank you very much indeed. You can let go of it now. You can let go now there, Andy. Let's put you back in the box. Great job, Mr. Miggs. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? In he goes. No. Let me out. I can't see anything. Can you see me? I can't see anything. We just open the box and let me out. Can you see anything? Just let me out. Can you see the lights? Let me out. Can you see the lights? Stop this. It's not nice. This is not nice. Stop it. Can you see me? Stop it. No, I can't see anything. I'll get you some water. Where have you gone? Where have you gone? Stop it, that's enough. That's enough! <laughs>